So in today's video, I'm gonna show you step-by-step -step on how to make your very own Goliath grouper hand line. Check it out. So when you're making a hand line, obviously the first thing you need is some rope. And right here, I have my old hand line that if you watched the video where we caught some Goliath groupers, you saw that I got cut off by a shark. So that's the whole reason that I'm uh, doing this video is because I had to remake this rig anyway. But you need some rope. And what I recommend is that you have double the length of rope for the deepest that you're gonna be using the hand line. So I think I have like 120 to like 150 feet of rope. And over here on the Gulf Coast, I'm not gonna go any deeper than like 60 feet on my sea hunt. So that's perfect. Another thing you're gonna need is some heavy mono for the leader on this hand line. So this right here is 500 pound mono and it's gonna be perfect for this. You're also gonna need a pair of crimpers. Obviously this is a massive pair, but it's gonna get the job done for me. You could probably get away with just tying like a uni knot with a mono. It's just really hard to tie 500 pound mono and also you just get a stronger connection using the crimps. Speaking of crimps, you're gonna need some crimps. And these are two and a half millimeter crimps that we're gonna be using. You're also gonna need a good pair of cutters to cut your mono. You're also gonna need a knife to cut your rope to get this whole thing started. And at the end, you need some uh, tape. I just use this, uh, what is it called? Electrical tape that works perfect. You're also gonna need a hook, obviously. And this hook is a lot smaller than the one I would actually put on the hand line, but I don't have any with me right now. The ones I would actually use, I went ahead and ordered some 20-0 circle hooks, but for the purpose of this video, I'm gonna show you how to tie it using these hooks. You're also gonna need a lighter for cutting the ends of the rope, because I'm actually gonna show you how to splice rope. So instead of having a disgusting mess of a knot like this, it's gonna look really clean and it's gonna be super strong. The first step you wanna do is to put a wrap of tape around your rope, roughly about a foot up from the end of your rope. This would be the starting point for your splicing. Next, you wanna cut the rope with a knife so you can separate the three different strands. Once you have each strand separated, you wanna wrap some tape around the end just so it stops the strands from unraveling. The next thing you want to do is to start unwinding your three strands all the way down to where you wrap the tape around your rope. You then want to make a loop using the section of rope that's behind your tape mark. This loop is going to be where you're going to tie your mono and where it connects back to the rope is where you're going to start your splicing. It is pretty much just braiding the three strands back into the rope in the opposite direction to create kind of like a Chinese finger trap effect. How you start is you slightly unravel one of the strands from the rope, just enough to make a gap. You then take one of the loose strands and braid it through that gap. You wanna pull the strand all the way through the gap and pull it tight. So then you take your next loose strand and you go ahead and move up one of the strands that are still on the rope and try and make a gap under there to braid it under. Again, you wanna pull it all the way tight. Same thing with the final strand. You wanna move up one more strand on the rope and then make that gap and braid it under and pull it tight. Once you have each one of your strands braided, you wanna make sure to pull each one of the loose ends as tight as you can get it. So this is where it could get a little bit confusing. You wanna take the first strand where it comes out from underneath the first gap you made and go over the next strand and under the one that's behind it by making the gap and braiding it through. Again, each time you wanna make sure you pull all the way through and pull it tight. You wanna do the same thing with the second strand. So you see where it comes out and you go over the next strand and then under the one that's behind it. So same thing with the last strand, you wanna make sure you go over the next one and then under the one that's behind it. And then make sure you pull all three as tight as you can get it. 
You wanna go ahead and repeat this process of going over the next strand and then under the one that's behind it three or four more times. You wanna make sure you have at least four solid braids on each strand to make sure you have a solid connection. So once you've done enough braiding and you're satisfied with how many are on there, you wanna make sure that you end each strand at about the same spot on the rope. So all you do is you braid the first two that you did and then it will lead the second strand up to the, the last one and then you'll braid the last one just by itself. So all three have ended at roughly the same spot on the rope. And then all you do is you take your knife and you cut each strand but you wanna make sure you leave a little bit of rope there because then you're gonna take your lighter and melt each end. You wanna make sure that the end is completely melted together so when it hardens, it's a pretty solid connection right there. Once you've done all that, you've spliced your rope and you have a solid loop connection that you're ready to tie some mono to. The first thing you wanna do is you wanna take uh, about a 10 foot section of your mono and cut it just so you have it ready to go. You then wanna slide one of the crimps onto the line to start off with. I'm gonna show you how to do this very strong loop connection that you can do with mono. I forgot the actual name of it, but it's a very good connection when you're gonna have heavy stress on the line. All it does is it creates a good loop in the mono and it's not gonna tighten down on itself. Feed the line through the loop that you made on the rope and then you start wrapping the mono back around itself about five or six times. Then what you do is you tighten down on both your tag end and on the main line of the mono until the loops are as tight as they can go, creating a nice loop in your mono as well. And then all you do is you slide your tag end and the mono into the other side of the crimp and slide the crimp up right next to the loop. You then take your pair of crimpers and crimp each end to create a solid connection. You can then cut the tag end and you are ready to go. As for attaching your hook, all I do is a solid crimp connection where you just feed the mono through the crimp, put it through the eye of the hook and then feed it back through the other end and crimp it down in each side. Once you've done all these steps, you now have a complete Goliath handline rig. You can go ahead and attach some weights to the eye of the hook. That's usually what I do is I use like 40 pound mono and tie it to a loop on the eye of the hook just so I can get it down a little bit quicker. Or we could just use it as kind of like a free line. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. That would really mean a lot to me. If you wanna see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and I will see you guys next time.